And part of the problem in California is that so few people are using no-till drills that we were, um, it was kind of a, uh, an open realm of, of, of questions, you know, what, what do we do? And so we went and started talking to people in the Midwest. Uh, there's some people in California who are also looking at bringing in drills at the same time. And so we started balancing out what we needed with what was available and looking at all the options, basically anything that we were looking at, except for possibly a, a Great Plains, was not in California. So we were kind of narrowing it down to specifically what we wanted and needed, and then chasing after that, as opposed to just trying to get something that was here. Because we didn't want to make another mistake. Buying a, 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 an implement that is not the implement that you need is costly. So we, um, after probably about four or five months of research, it came down to this being probably one of our best choices. We were splitting hairs there at the end, probably, but um, it came down to, to, to thinking that this looked like it would be the best option for us. And um, we, uh, in order to get that then, they had to make it to our size, which was a little bit of an unusual size, but it wasn't, it was one of their regular, regular sizes that they offered, they just don't sell many. So they actually had to build it up from the ground, which took another four months. So by the time this was all done, done it, was almost, it was almost a year process. Um, and the first thing we did once we, um, we, this is, as far as we know, this is the first one, and as far as the company knows, this is the first crust buster in, in uh, the state of California. And so we, they gave us a dealer price because when it got here, we had to put it together too. Um, but the first thing we did after putting it together was throw some seed in it and go out to a field. Actually, we didn't even throw seed in it. We just went out to a field where we had high residue, which was about a foot deep, and uh, went out there and ran the, ran the drill to see what would happen with that residue. If we had taken the other drill out, we wouldn't have gotten 10 yards, and it would have been full of residue. And this just rolled right over it and cut through it and made a groove for the seed. So that was a big relief seeing that right off the bat. The second thing was, is when you look at that, when you've got residue that deep, and you've got a little slot where the seed is going to go, is the seed actually gonna germinate in here? And so because of that, um, well, we had that worry, so we, we ended up planting a field uh, probably about a week later then, and planted uh, 90 acres. And then the next concern was, is anything gonna come up? And you can see the little, and you can see it's getting covered, but it's like it's like you have these giant loaves of bread, and you've got a seed down there. And is it is it going to get enough sunlight? Has it got enough warmth? And so we uh, we we seeded, we irrigated, and we waited. And then the next big uh, relief was when stuff germinated, and it germinated really well. In a sense, I think it was well protected in that. This was a summer crop, and because of that. It had, the soil was kept fairly cool and moist, and it had protection from the wind and excessive sun. So it was kind of like a little, a nice little shelter. And uh, stuff germinated great, and there was no problem. It's got a, it's got a, a what they call a, um, a legume box, which would be for things like alfalfa and really small seeded mm -hmm. grasses and things like that. And then the regular, the regular seed box. But we've been doing, so far we've done all multi-species seeding, and, um, to do that, we just put everything in one blend and run it in the big box. Okay, so so first we are we're we're farming in two or, or drilling in two situations. We're doing on rangeland that is not tilled, and then we're 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 we're, we're also drilling in cropland that was previously tilled. And so and the and the cropland a, a lot of our cropland is irrigated, and those are the areas where we really get a lot of residue. And so the um, some of the features that help us deal with that residue are these disc openers down here. And you can see there's two discs. They kind of come together. There's a little groove between them. And the seed is actually falling, falling right in behind that groove through a little tube here. So it's opening up a little, just a, you know, smaller than a pencil mm -hmm. groove. And then the seed is falling, falling in that. And this comes along behind it. And it actually compacts both sides of your trench. So if your trench is right here, it's actually straddling that, and so it's packing in from the side, so you don't have, so you're getting good soil to seed contact, but you're not compressing 
the top. You, you're it. not creating a lot of compaction. So this design's critical for that. This design is important for that. And there's, um, right now in, in the no-till world, there's so many options, and wheels are one of those that there's a lot of options. So you can, they have a, a number of different designs depending on your soil type and, and what you're planting. And so um, after talking through with the guys that built this machine, they decided that this would probably be our best option. And it seems to be working well for us, and I would say at this point we're probably not uh, uh, competent enough at this to, to, to know, well, maybe we need this. So, But for, for right now, this seems to be working well. So, and if we come around to the other side, this has a bunch of weights on the front. And so, between the, these weights that are added on and the weight of the machine itself, that comes to 500 pounds for each cedar unit. So every CD, every double disc opener can have the equivalent of 500 pounds of pressure on it. And that allows it to go through really tough soil. And um, we can adjust that and, and at times we probably have had more weight than we need on here. Yeah. But we can, we can adjust it by removing weight and we can adjust it by how we, how we set the, the planter depths. Uh -huh. So, okay. um, so those, are, those are kind of the main things that are working in our favor with this is weight and the right cutter. The, the other dr drill that I was talking about, um, it has a, a, a single coulter in the front which is making a groove and then there is what is called a, uh, a plow, uh, it's a, but it's a, it's, a, it's a small plow, it's more like a point like, that, that is curved into the, to, towards the front and it just makes a little furrow. But the problem with that is it acts like a rake and so when you have residue it's just raking that all up whereas the disc slices and rolls over it. It doesn't catch anything. 